This from Brownswire. Five Saints players the Browns must lock in on in the Week 11 matchup. Quarterback Derek Carr, we've already heard from him, missed most of October with an injury, has returned uh, 505 passing yards and three touchdowns since he's been back. Safety Tyrone Matthew holds a 61 uh, PFF grade, significantly lower than his first two seasons with the Saints. Remember, the Saints did trade their best corner, Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, wide receiver Marquez Valdez Scantling, 109 receiving yards, two touchdowns last week against the Falcons. Saints are banged up at wide receiver. Demario Davis, people forget he played with the Browns. Leads the team 66 tackles, 37th in the NFL. And Alvin Kamara, fourth in the NFL with 715 rushing yards. Uh, he also has 421 receiving yards, leads all running backs. Kamara concerns me quite a bit, and Derek Carr seems to always have pretty good games against the Browns when he plays them. There's a lot of quarterbacks where you'll say, like, oh, they can crack under pressure and turn the ball over. It's like, but not against the Browns. <laughs> it's like that just seems to be how it works out. And I think that Derek Carr, probably you're right on that. It, it, it's definitely uh, – He's definitely one of those guys. Yeah, if I'm looking at that list, especially on offense, it, it's Alvin Kamara. Like you're talking about a guy over a thousand all-purpose yards already. Uh, 29 years old doesn't really show much signs of slowing down at this point. But he's like the guy that I'm locking in on that offense. If I can find a way to limit Alvin Kamara, I feel pretty good about going up against the Saints. Their top pass catchers, Shahid and Chris Olave, are out. Yeah, Mar Marquez Valdez Scantling uh, kind of came out of nowhere the last couple of weeks had a couple of good games uh, but you know you're talking about a guy that was available later in the year for a reason um, so without their top guys out there if you can find a way to limit Alvin Kamara and make Derek Carr uncomfortable you got a really good shot and then flipping in on the other side yeah Tyron Matthew uh, starts to become one of the bigger uh, pieces because you're looking at an offense with Jamin Swinson that is like to got, get a little bit more vertical than they did with Deshaun Watson. And like you said, Marshawn Lattimore, great, phenomenal player. He's not there anymore. If you're going to try to test things deep, you've got to worry about Matthew because he is uh, one of those ball hawking safeties that does a really great job of, of undercutting routes and, and forcing turnovers. Um, so if you can push the ball vertically on Matthew, get behind him a little bit, he's lost a step or so, so uh, over the years as he gets older, I think you got a real shot. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great list. Yeah, the, the one that I would add to it is Taysom Hill because, you know, yeah. if they get inside the five-yard line, he's coming in. And, and um, I, I have some concerns about an overly aggressive uh, defense with Taysom Hill as, as a uh, running-type quarterback. So we, uh, we'll see. Um, this also from ESPN.com, uh, it's preview for this game. So Brown's storyline to watch. Defensive communication, a point of emphasis, a, a pair of deep touchdowns uh, before the bye and the loss to the Chargers. Saints' storyline to watch. Saints had a late forced fumble and an interception to seal the win against the Falcons. Uh, they hope they can make some of those plays against Jameis Winston, who had five interceptions in his past four starts. Two and two is, uh, as a Saint in 2023, three in week nine uh, versus the Chargers. All right, when, when I look at that, and, and we touched on it, um, their wide receiving core is depleted. So you want to get after um, Derek Carr. Don't give him time to throw. Don't give him time to do anything underneath. Um, but the defensive communication does, it's concerning. It, it, I mean, this is almost, and J remember, Joe Woods, is their defensive coordinator, and it's almost looking like that kind of mishaps the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, I've I've said the exact same thing. I'm like, we all wanted to be mad at Joe Woods for three years about it, and all of a sudden that's happening in Cleveland now with, with, with him gone. Yeah, you know, that's the big key is trying to force some turnovers and try to make Derek Carr uncomfortable. But if you leave someone wide the heck open as a result, because you can't communicate defensively, you're in a rough spot. Like, like that's a problem, you know, like you can't, you can't leave these guys wide open because that gives them easy answers and they can negate whatever you're doing, you know, well on the defensive side in terms of pressure, because he's just going to throw the ball to somebody that's wide open. It's just, you cannot give opposing quarterbacks, 
especially a quarterback like Carr, you may not put him in that elite tier, but Carr has played a ton of football and had a ton of success in the NFL. You cannot give a guy like that incredibly easy answers. If you give him an easy out in, in, in the plays that your, your front and your pressure coverage plays really, really well, then you're going to be in a bad spot. 